Well, thank you for joining me this afternoon, and um, we're going to continue our study uh, in regard to the uh, rapture and to the second coming of the Mashiach, of the Messiah. And um, I want to share some verses that I have not really gotten into yet that I want to read and uh, share with you today that will help clear up, you know, your understanding of, you know, these end time events that we're facing because I don't think there's a greater subject that needs to be taught and preached about than what we're about to see come to pass over the next very short period of time. And I'm making reference to the actual tribulation period or Daniel's 70th week as the scripture talks about or also referred to as Jacob's trouble. And, um, and so we're going to talk about that and it's, and it's really uh, the events that we're now witnessing today. And if, you, if you're paying any attention to the news today, you recognize that we are living in the last days. There is so much evidence, so much proof, it's just overwhelming. The more that I study, the more that I spend time looking into this and, and searching the scriptures, and uh, the more amazed I am of how near we must be to the second coming of the Mashiach. But before the second coming actually takes place, there's an event that's described in the scriptures that is going to take place before the time of Jacob's trouble or before the tribulation period and that is the rapture of the church now again when I use the word church some people don't like that word they 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 think it's just a made-up word which it actually is just an English word the actual uh, Hebrew word is uh, kadal or excuse me kahal and uh, it actually means assembly it means an assembly or congregation uh, of believers but it was, it was first used by the Messiah in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And uh, I, I've done a teaching on that, so I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail. But the main thing that I want to point out in that is that uh, if you go back and read those verses, you'll recognize and under, have the understanding that Yahusha, the Messiah, said that he would build his church upon the foundation or the, the revelation of who he was. Now, that's brought out, and the fact is because uh, Peter recognized who he was and said, Thou art the Mashiach, the son of the living Elohim. And so the Messiah said, Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter, but my Father, which is heaven. And he said, Upon this, and this rock, or this revelation, is what he's making reference to, upon this foundation, I will build my church. Now, notice something that's very uh, important to understand about what he just said. He said, I will build my church, meaning that the church had not been built yet. In fact, until the Messiah actually died, paid the price for you, your sins and my sins, uh, there, was no, there was no church. Even during the gospel, I mean, during the gospel period of the apostles and when Mashiach walked on the earth, there was no, say, born again Jew or Gentile at that time until the Messiah had paid the price for man's redemption and sin and rose again from the dead. And actually the, the, the uh, church began at, on the, the feast of uh, Shavuot or Pentecost. And that's when the, the Ruach was given. That's why they were, they were told to wait and tarry until they be endued with power from on high. That was a commandment by, by Yahushua and it told them that, that when they were uh, uh, baptized in the Spirit that they would be witnesses unto him. And that's when the church actually began. It began with the Jewish believers at that time in Acts chapter 2. But it also became available to the Gentiles. As you read in Acts chapter uh, 10 and, and chapter 11, as Peter uh recognized that uh, in his vision that the, that the Gentiles, that salvation was also made available to the Gentiles. Now, Jew and Gentiles, believers, are what the church is all about. Now, again, if, you've got a, if you're hanging up on the, the word church, just, uh, just go use the Hebrew word. And, um, but it is the assembly that Yahushua said that he would build his church upon the revelation of who he was. See, that's why the Jew and Gentiles, it's by faith that we're justified. Jew and Gentile can be justified by putting their faith in the Messiah as the sacrifice that was sent by the Father Yahuwah 
to pay the price for our redemption. And for those that believe, as he said, that he that believeth has everlasting life. The belief that he has to have it is in the Messiah, that he is the son of the living Elohim, and that he, he that uh, died for our sins, according to the scriptures, was raised again for our justification. And for those Jew and Gentiles who will put their faith in him can be born again of the Ruach HaKadosh. And we are the body of Mashiach. And that's what the rapture is all about. The rapture is about coming to take away his bride before this tribulation period begins or the time frame known as Jacob's trouble begins. And, um, and that is when Yahuwah is going to turn all of his attention back toward the Jewish people. The scripture says that until the fullness of the Gentiles come in, you know, we're the, the, when the last Gentile that, the, uh, that's, been, that's received the Mashiach, that's destined to receive the Mashiach, come in, then Yahuwah will catch us away at the time that he's appointed, and at that time, then he will turn his, after that time, he's going to turn his attention to the nation of Yasharel. That will begin, the, the period of the tribulation will actually begin when the uh, Antichrist, or the Anti-Messiah, actually signs this agreement with Yasharel, it's a it's a seven year period of time. We know that because it's uh, referred to as the, um, you know, as this of of Jacob's trouble is is seven year time frame that we're talking about here, and uh, it's the time frame that Yahuwah is like I said turned his attention toward the nation of Yasharel. He's actually using this time frame to to as a testing time to bring them to a revelation of who the Messiah is. And they're going to turn to him whom they have whom they have pierced, and they will look upon him whom they have pierced, and they will call out to him, and he shall save them, as the scripture says. We'll pick this up on our next session. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. And uh, we I'm going to get into some of these verses that I haven't gotten into yet, so please uh, listen in and be watchful for them. Thank you. Shalom.